The idea is that we have our x values, we took the log of y, and after doing that, we felt that we had data that was appropriate for a simple linear regression. What model are we assuming if we approximate this line? We're saying that the mean of the log of y given x is equal to some intercept plus some slope times x. If you're comfortable leaving y on the log scale, you can just stop. If y is dollars and you are comfortable talking about dollars, you can stop. You can say when x goes up by 1, the log of y, the mean of the log of y goes up by beta 1. That's perfectly appropriate because that's what this line says. When x goes up by 1, the log of y, the mean of the log of y goes up by beta 1. That's perfectly appropriate. However, if you're not comfortable interpreting things on the log scale, as I personally usually am not, the nice thing about the log is we can get back to our original scale. So let's do that, and we're going to do it in the same way we did before. Let's assume that we're interested in the mean of the log of y, given that x is equal to 3, and this model says that that's equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 times 3, and we're interested in the mean of the log of y when x is equal to 4, and that is beta 0 plus beta 1 times 4, and I'm going to do the same kind of subtraction that I did earlier. What do I have here? The mean of the log of y when x is equal to 4 minus the mean of the log of y when x is equal to 3 is equal to beta 0 minus beta 0, cancel. Beta 1 times 4 minus beta 1 times 3 is equal to beta 1 times 1. This should look a little bit familiar if you remember the parallel discussion we had in the context of t-tests on the log scale. The point of taking the log, the point of taking the log was so that the y values looked approximately normal. And our hope, if this worked, if, if taking the log was successful, it's not just that the y values themselves um, look normal. In fact, that doesn't even have to be true. Rather, the assumption underlying the regression is that for any particular value of x, the log values of y seem to be approximately normal. If that's true, that the log values of y are approximately normal for any value of x, then the mean of those log values given x should be approximately equal to the median of those log values given x because of the symmetry of the normal distribution. So I should be able to write the word median where I had the word mean before. And that's what I'm going to do. So now I have this statement that when x changes from 3 to 4, when we add 1 to x, the median of the log of y increases by beta 1, whatever that number is. OK, great. So now what are we going to do? Well, remember that I get to switch the log and the median. Remember that I get to switch the log and the median. Because if you have a bunch of values in order, the middle one is the median. And if you log all those same values, it'll still be the middle one that is the median. So I'm going to now write the log of the median of y given that x is equal to 4, is equal to the log, nope, oh, that's a minus, not equal, minus the log of the median of y when x is equal to 3 is equal to beta 1. I've gone through the same process here that I went through in the context of the t-test. Now what are we going to do? Note that this is the log of a quantity minus the log of another quantity. If we think back to the first time we ever learned about logs, the log of a minus the log of b is the log of a over b. So that's what I'm going to write over here. I'm going to write the log of the first thing we've written, which is the median of y, given that x is equal to 4, divided by the second quantity that we took the log of, which is the median of y when x is equal to 3. And that whole thing is equal to beta 1. Okay. 
Now what am I going to do? Remember that in statistics, the convention is to take log base e, just that number, 2.7. You could use 10, and this would all work out the same way, but the convention is to use log base e. And in software is like R, when you use the function log, the default is log base e. It's important to remember. So how am I going to get rid of this log if I don't have good intuition for, uh, for it? If I take e raised to the power of everything that's on this side, and e raised to the power of everything that's on this side, these two statements will still be equal to each other. These two expressions will still be equal to each other. But the e cancels out the log. The e cancels out the log. Let me write this just so it's more lined up. What do we have here? Remember that this is just some number. There is some true slope of the line, but I don't know what it is. So if you think about the sample values as opposed to the population values, I have some estimate of this slope. I have some estimate of the slope. Some number, like 7. If I take 2.1 raised to the power of 7, I just get some number. This right side here, my estimate of it is just some number. What is that an estimate of? It's an estimate of the ratio between the median of y when x is equal to 4 and the median of y when x is equal to 3. What's the sentence we get to make in this context? When x goes up by 1, the median of y given x is multiplied by e to the beta 1. When x increases by 1, when we add 1 to x, the median of y given x is multiplied by e to the beta 1. And if it's easier to see, I can multiply both these sides by the median of y given x is equal to 3. This says the median of y when x is equal to 4 is equal to the median of y when x is equal to 3 multiplied by some number. And this is a number we can estimate because we have an estimate of beta 1 and we have this value e. So even if you had to take the log of your outcome, the log of y, in order to run a simple linear regression, in order to have your linearity assumption and your homoscedasticity assumption be true, even if that's what you had to do, we can still talk about the results on this original scale by exponentiating, taking e to the power of whatever our slope estimate is, and talking about how much the median of y given x changes when x goes up by 1, as opposed to how much the mean of y given x changes. Just like in the context of the t-test, we can also use intervals here. You have, from your regression output, lower and upper bounds for this slope estimate. If you take e to the lower bound, e to the upper bound, now you have a confidence interval for this number. And you can say, the value that we have to multiply the median by when x goes up by 1 has a 95% probability of lying in this certain range. And again, that range is obtained by exponentiating the lower bound for the slope and exponentiating the upper bound for the slope. When we didn't have any transformations, we could say, when x goes up by 1, the mean of y given x goes up by beta 1. When we log y but not x, we can say, when x goes up by 1, the median of y given x is multiplied by e to the beta 1.